Hi there folks, I wanted to kick off our new unit with a video. And if you've seen the checklist, you probably have seen that we are going to start a new social studies unit. And we're going to study the California Indians, um, and specifically the California Indians who lived in the very same area that you live. Which takes me to my question, you can see it here behind or in front of the spinning globe. Where do you live? If somebody asks, hey, where do you live? What do you say? Do you tell them your town, your city, maybe you say your street name, your state? I guess it depends on who you're talking to. Um, and so I actually want to focus on this area that we live. And in order to do that, we're actually going to fly somewhere. See if you can figure out where we're going to fly. Here we go. Oh, what a lovely, nice, slow-moving trip we're taking. Ah. Oh, gosh. Ah! Ah! Oh, whew. thought we were going to crash. No, we're okay. It's going to slow down. Where do you think I'm taking you? Where do you think this is? Hmm, big field, big playground area. Oh, look at where my mouse is. That's room 10. Wait, we're going somewhere. Oh, we're gonna take a quick drive down Devonshire. This street here is Devonshire. And we're gonna come to another school, an elementary school, not too far from us. This is called Chatsworth Park Elementary. So this is Devonshire. And this is Topanga, and like I said, it's not that far from us. If you just go down Devonshire, there's Chatsworth High School. A little bit further, a little bit further, Chaminade, and there's our school. Okay, so we're just taking a real quick drive down Devonshire to this other school. And the reason I want to use this other school is because they actually have some pretty cool historical photographs. So this is Topanga. This is Devonshire, and this is Chatsworth Park. Actually, let me show you what it looks like. There it is. So this is Devonshire. This is Topanga. Um, this is present day. The screen will go away. It says present day. And so one thing I want you to notice are this building here. This is the auditorium that they have. It's actually a renovated. They put some air conditioning in, so they had to change the look of it just a little bit. But notice these columns here. Okay, because I want to go back a little bit. It, it didn't always look like that, believe it or not. Look at this. Look at these same columns. Auditorium. What year do you think this was? Present day? Take a guess. Drum roll, please. Brrr. 1935. That was, a, I think, the year it was built. This, this auditorium here was built 19. 35, but actually that wasn't the year the school opened. The school had already been open. There was actually an earthquake a little bit right before that, um, and it ruined their building. So actually, this is what the school used to look like. This was Chatsworth Park Elementary, and notice it was a two-story ordeal, kind of cool-looking school. We don't have schools like that anymore. Look at these wonderful columns. You know what year it was? Any guesses? Take a guess. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know. Here we go. Oh, I do know. It was 1917. That was this year. Oh, but that's 103 years ago. But it didn't always look like that, believe it or not. Here's Chatsworth Park Elementary under a different name. This was actually Santa Susana School. And the funny thing is, I live in Santa Susana. But this school was on that same property down Devonshire, Topanga, looked a little different, didn't it? And so Santa Susana must have been bigger just over these hills back here in the background of Simi Valley, which is where I live. And I live in the Santa Susana side of Simi Valley. But this was that same property, that school. I just think it's so neat going back in time to see what was there. But wait, we can go further back, right? We can go even further back Oh, this was 1890. I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you this was 1890. That's kind of neat, right? Keep that year in mind. That might come into play a little bit later. 1890. Whew. That's cool. But we can go even further than 1890. Ah, the California Indians. And of course, this is an artist depiction. This is a representation. This isn't an actual photograph like the other ones we were looking at. But this is the same land. They were living on the same land. And so you act, we actually went back to the year 450, and the CE stands for Common Era. Um, gosh, now I'm blinking. 
I want to double check BC. Yeah, I think it's common era. I'll double check that. Um, but 450 common era. And so these people, by the way, this is the Tatavium. Meet the Tatavium. They are the group, the band of California Indians that lived on the very same land that we go to school on. Look, here they are going to school back here. You know, they're, they're playing. They're probably playing a game called Haraquar or they're pa practicing um, hunting. And look at her sitting at the fire, right? She's probably roasting some sort of seed or acorn. And look at him. He looks like he's going to go maybe pole vaulting or something. No, nope, he's not. He's going to go hunting probably. Going to hunt probably uh, maybe rabbit with that. But that's a little bit big for a rabbit. They would use a throwing stick for a rabbit. Um, these are their homes. Notice the shape. They are called Kitches, K-E-C-H. And together... They lived in a village called a Kikech, K-E-K-E-C-H, Kikech. And it was about 200 to 300 people. And these villages were all over the San Fernando Valley. San Fernando actually came from um, a Spanish word. San Fernando was the mission that was here. And that's gonna, we're going to keep going um, into this history. So let's take a look at the history of the Tatavium. They lived in villages called Kikeches um, of about 200 to 300 people. And now they were 450 all the way up until about 1797 is when the Spanish came. Okay. And the Spanish enslaved the Tatavium. They made them slaves. They captured them and brought them to these missions. This is Mission San Fernando. Um, they've rebuilt it since then, but this was Mission San Fernando, and they they bring them in there, and they bring them in for two reasons. Number one, they some people wanted to convert them to their religion. They really believed in their religion, Catholicism, and they thought they were helping them out. Others were not doing that. They were enslaving them because, hey, if I could get them to work my fields, I can get more profit. And so just like um, our country had slavery with African Americans, um, the Spanish enslaved the Tatavium. Now, this was before 1797. Yes, America was around, but not in California, right? America hadn't pushed out to California. So California was still um, nobody's land, and the Spanish came and wanted to claim it. And so that's how they started claiming it. So that happened until about, my face is probably going to cover it, 1821 is what that says under there. Yep, 1821. Um, and 1821, that's us move even higher, Mexico enters the picture, okay? So Mexico, people who were in the area but weren't Spanish, um, they started forming a country and or had moved from south and started um, challenging the Spanish or, or wanting to be in this picture, for lack of a better word. I can't think of a word right now. Um, and in 1834, we see here, Mexico, this is a Tatavium woman, right? They grant the Tatavium rights to own land. And so you're like, okay, that's working kind of nicely. Um, you know, we came from this enslaving them to, hey, now we can grant them um, land. Although if you think about it back, 450 CE and up until 1797, it was their land anyways. And now Mexico's granting them the right to own land. Well, they already had that land. That was 18, what, 34, we said about. Um, 12 years later, I couldn't do the math. I'm so sorry. About 12 years later, we enter the American period. Okay, so now America's starting to move west towards California and starting to gain more land and taking some of it by treaty and agreements and taking others of it by just claiming it. And so America enters the picture as well. Um, and they take over a lot of that land. Okay. So Mexico, had the, Spain had the land, then Mexico had the land and now America has the land. And in 1854, a man by the name of De Chelis, he's a Spanish guy. He regains the northern half of 
what used to be the San Fernando Mission. Remember that really old dilapidated building I showed you? I'm, I'm going to show you again on the next slide. He regains that land. He bought it back from um, somebody. And let me show you the map. So here's what we're talking about. Let me move this down. This is the San Fernando Mission. Oops, sorry. That thing, that building I showed you, that's right there where that dot's at. And this is actually our valley. Gosh, all you know it. That's where we go to school. Oh, yes. Look, here's Devonshire. Here's Corbin. So this, here's our school. You go up Corbin. Hey, here's Porter Ranch. Ellen lives there. Hi, Ellen. How are you? And her whole family. Maybe some of the other people here live in Porter Ranch. I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. And so De Chellis, the Spanish fellow, he regains a lot of this land. Okay, that was 1854. Well, about 18 years later, De Chellis, here he is. He's tending that land. This is 1872 now, about 18 years later. He sells the land. He sells it to someone. Not just any someone. Someone named George. This guy. This is George. Hi, George. Everybody say hi, George. Hi, George. Hi, everybody. I don't know if he talks like that or not. He might have. I don't know for sure. Anyways, his name was George, but he also had a last name. George Porter. Hmm. Porter. That's weird. Yeah. He put the Porter in Porter Ranch. This is who bought that land, that DeCellis, the northern land. Let me go back to my map. DeCellis bought this, the northern half, where Porter Ranch is located. And he sold it to this guy named George Porter. I think that's really interesting. That's where, if you've ever wondered, who who's Porter? Where did they get that name? Did you just come up with it? No, they didn't. It's because DeCellis, this fella here, sold it to this fella here in 1872 right now later on they people learned this history and said oh let's honor george porter since it was his land and call it porter ranch so it's not like he named it porter ranch i mean maybe he did i don't quite know um, but i thought that was pretty interesting i started with schools we're going to end it with schools this is 1906 this is the S san fernando grammar school these are all tatavium children boys and girls all to Tavium. And I don't know where the San Fernando Grammar School is. It's not the same building I was showing you. It's not the Chatsworth Park Elementary. I'll look that up. I don't know where this one is. But the reason I'm showing you this is because actually um, white children did go there as well, but they actually segregated them. And so that's something we talked about with Martin Luther King Jr. and, and um, social justice and civil rights. And they were segregated here. Um, the Tatavium children had a play by themselves. They had their own classes. They couldn't go to class with the white kids. And so that's kind of um, sad. I thought I'm going to go back a few years. I think it's what, 21 years maybe to 1885. This fellow is Rogiero Rocha or Roca. I don't know how to say that, but he's interesting. He's a Tatavian fellow. We're almost done. He's a Tatavian fellow and he's what they call a Tomyar or captain. So after um, the mission era, when the Tatavium finally kind of got rights back in the you know 1870s, 1880s, um, this fellow became the leader or the captain or what in their language, the Tomyar of um, the Tatavium. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. I wanted you to see him, what he looked like. Oh, you know what? I actually do have one more picture, I believe. Let me double check. Wait, who are these people? This is weird. Who's this with like a watch? That's like nowadays. Sunglasses? What? Blue jeans? That's all stuff we... Why did I put this picture in there? You know what I want you to get out of this unit? I want you to understand the Tatavium are not like long gone history. Look at this guy's shirt. It says Tatavium. This is current. This guy, he's actually been on our school. This is Rudy Ortega Jr. He's the Tomyar, the current captain of the Tatavium. He's been on our school grounds. He sang a blessing for our garden many years ago when we first started the gardening program at OCS. Um, I've met him at a at CSUN. I went to this school 
gathering and I met him and I talked with him and they're alive. They're just like you and me. So a lot of times we kind of think of ooh, Native Americans or California Indians and we're really talking about them like they're gone. They're in the past and no, they're not. They're still alive. They're right there. Right. And so that's what I want you to get out of this is understanding that they are still around. Yes, it's very um, important to study their history and understand where they came from, but also understand that they're still here and we shouldn't marginalize them. We shouldn't um, stereotype them. We should respect their culture and learn about their culture so that we can honor and, and respect just like we want that respect as well right? So um, we are going to get into some pretty interesting things in this unit. I'm excited about it. And I hope you enjoyed that very brief history of the Tatavium. Oh, Tatavia means people facing the sun, by the way. That's what that word means. Um, and as we go through this, I will share a lot of Tatavium words that you probably know already. You've probably heard of them. In fact, you heard one in the video today. I'll give you the one, Topanga. I said, oh, this is Topanga. This is Devonshire. Topanga is a Tatavian word, and it meant um, village to the sea. And so anytime you're on Topanga um, Canyon, the, the street, Topanga, you're speaking Tatavium. That was their name for that village. It was village to the sea. So I think that's really interesting. I'll share some more as we go through this unit. All right.